<clears throat> okay, <laughs> two o'clock, <laughs> we're on. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Juanita Papano. I'm the commercial fruit extension agent for Orange Lake and Marion counties. And I'm gonna be talking to you today about strawberries for Central Florida. And Lori Johnson from Lake County is gonna be joining me to talk about how delicious strawberries are from Central Florida. So I'm going to go ahead and begin. Please. When did, did you start recording? Oh no, I don't even see that. Okay. Uh, you are recording. It is recording. I don't, yeah, I don't have control of that. All right. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat box or um, do we have, we have a question, uh, question and answer. I'm sorry, not a chat box, but the Q and A. Please put them in there and um, Juanda is going to be helping me with this by, by looking at those because I can't look at them while I'm talking. Sorry, but I feel free to, um, to interject or, or write into that Q and A if you have any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. All right. And of course, it's not doing anything. <laughs> um, okay. Strawberries in Central Florida are going to be different from strawberries you've grown up north, mainly because we grow them as annuals. We plant them in September or October, and we start harvesting about November through April. And so very different than up north where you can grow them as a perennial crop and they usually flower and fruit in the spring only. Now there are different types of strawberries. There are the traditional ones that flower in, in the spring. Uh, up north they flower in the spring and fruit ones. They're called June bearers or short day induced flowers. Um, then you have ever bearers that require long days to flower and you have day neutrals that are not really affected by day length. Most of the strawberries grown in Florida are actually the June bearers, but because of our conditions, they will continue to flower and fruit in cycles over the whole winter. Um, if you're growing anything like a day neutral, you may get um, strawberries produced over a longer period of time, but there's very few strawberries. There's nothing much at any one time. So having the, the June bearer type, um, they, they flower and fruit in, in, a, in a concentrated block, so you can get a whole lot more at one time. So, Temperature and day length um, are really critical for strawberries. They affect that flowering and fruiting. And for those June bearers, if it's below 59 degrees at night, the June bearers are gonna to continue to flower. Uh, once the temperatures get above 77, nothing's going to flower. And um, that's about the time where we have to say, okay, we're, we're pulling up our strawberries because we can't really grow them anymore in, in, through the summer. Um, day lengths of about 14 hours or less and temperatures of 50 to 80 degrees are ideal. And so that's why our fall, winter, early spring are perfect here. Um, that fruit production is in cycles, about two to three cycles over the winter. Uh, if we get some freezing weather, it can be interrupted. All right, our fruit. Um, it, it usually takes about 28 days from flower to fruit. And pollination is really critical to fruit development. If you look at that upper left-hand corner, it shows you that flower up close and each of those little individual pistils has to be pollinated to get a, a properly shaped fruit. And so each of those little seeds, each of the little seeds is actually a fruit in a strawberry and the swollen part that's red that you eat is actually a, a, a specialized stem that's um, caused to swell up and form that nice fleshy edible part because the seed got pollinated. So you need that seed to, to be pollinated to get the fruit to form properly. Otherwise you get this, you know, like in the bottom one where they have this kind of weird cat face type ones. You can use, if you don't have good pollination because it is wind and insect pollinated, you can go through with a little tiny paint brush and swirl it around in the flowers and pollinate them that way to make sure you get a good enough pollination. Okay, so some misshapen fruit, um, look really weird. They're, they're more fasciated. Fasciated means they're like multiple fruits kind of morphed, grown together, and or ones that have that hollow heart is seen in that picture. That's more a characteristic of the variety that you're growing rather than the conditions. But frost damage or poor pollination can cause misshapen fruit. Okay, Lori. All right, good afternoon, everyone. So strawberries are packed with great nutrition. So that's what we want to hear. Everybody loves strawberries. They include vitamin C, folate, potassium, and fiber. So 
So folate will help our red blood cells form. Potassium is gonna help our nervous system and our blood pressure to be regulated. And that fiber is gonna help with our heart health and overall um, of our digestive system, keeping everything on track the way it should be. On the next slide, we're gonna talk more about vitamin C. I have to tell you that that picture of fruit looked pretty bad. <laughs> Where'd you get those? <laughs> Um, unfortunately, I grew those, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not an experienced strawberry grower. Um, at, I have been trying my entire life, but maybe we'll get, you, we'll get you going. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will improve my strawberries, um, but I've been growing them since I was a little girl with my grandfather. So hopefully, I can improve <laughs> now that you were growing them up north, though, right? I was growing them up north. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. So, oh, you're good. Um, so about eight strawberries have more vitamin C than an orange. So, you know, a lot of people think of vitamin C and they just think of oranges, but um, many other fruits um, have vitamin C like strawberries. So overall, vitamin C is going to help with just our overall health of our immune system. Uh, we need it to grow and repair the tissues in our body, um, help speed up that those wounds from healing, um, keep us um, or decrease the severity of the colds and that we may get um, and along with keeping our bones and teeth nice and strong. It does work as an antioxidant um, to possibly prevent uh, certain types of cancers, heart disease, and osteoporosis. And vitamin C rich foods along like strawberries along with an iron rich food helps your body absorb that iron um, in, in greater amounts. So for example, if you have strawberries in your oatmeal or if you have a spinach salad with strawberries, those, that combination there is going to help make that iron more available for your body and give you a great source of vitamin C. All right, back to you. Okay. Okay. Well, you may be aware that strawberries produce runners and these are long stolons with little tiny baby plants at each node. And those, those new little baby plants will root out. And up north, we let them runner and fill in a whole area. Um, for our strawberries here, we, we do individual plants. Runners are produced by long days and warmer temperatures. So if we let the strawberries grow over the year, they might produce some runners in the summertime, but that's not what we normally want. Um, that's what the nurseries do, and the nurseries are up north that grow the strawberry plants for us. So runners are stimulated by long days, warmer temperatures. They compete with flowering. So normally, you know, flowers are in the spring, runners in the summer. Um, there's not too much of a problem unless conditions are right for both to do. Uh, rooted runners are normally um, grown up north. They root them, they cold store them, or they grow them in a cold area, and they ship them bare root for planting down here. So when you're planting your strawberries, you should make sure that you have at least eight hours of direct sunlight per day on that spot. They don't like shady spots. They like soil that's well-drained, slightly acidic. And we usually use, commercially, we use raised beds for good drainage. Now, when you're preparing that bed, you can put two pounds per 10 foot of row of a 10-5-10 fertilizer with micronutrients and incorporate it in pre-plant into the bed um, and it, make sure that at least half of that nitrogen is slow release. You can put uh, drip irrigation tubing or tape laid. It's usually laid commercially one to two inches below the top of that soil. And then the soil, the, the bed is covered with black poly polyethylene, one to 1.5 mils thick. Don't use clear plastic. Clear plastic is gonna be like solarization and, and it's not good. You'll get all kinds of weeds and stuff growing under that. Um, black or sometimes white or black, white on black. Um, but if you use black, it keeps it warmer. So in the winter time, you want those roots to be a little warmer. And then the, the plants are actually set through slits in the plastic. Now it's important when you're, um, this is what they would look like. Um, the, the ones on the left are the bare rooted plants. They call them bare rooted frigo plants. That means they've been cold stored, cold treated so that that cold initiate, helps them to initiate flowers. And on the right hand side are some fresh tray plants these are our plants, little rooted runners that are um, rooted into little plugs. So they're um, very easy. Uh, they're a lot easier actually use less water to get established. So important when you are planting that you plant them just right. They are like a Goldilocks. They have to have it just right, not too deep, not too shallow. On the left hand side is um, too shallow. Uh, they, the roots are exposed, the plant's going to die. 
the one on the right, the crown, that little bud in the center is covered over with soil, it's gonna die. You have to have it right there in the middle, that perfect sweet spot. Okay, so planting an establishment. They're usually planted anywhere from September 20th, the 25th to October 20th. Uh, we usually put about 12 to 16 inches between plants, 12 to 14 inches between rows, depending on your equipment or what you're doing. Um, the bare root plants are going to need some sprinkler irrigation. You can think of these are like putting in your turf that you have to irrigate it a lot for the first one to two weeks. And, and so they will use um, very light amounts, but sprinkler irrigation from like 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. commercially it uses a lot of water. Once the plants do not wilt during the heat of the day, they can you can revert to drip. Um, and then drip irrigation is about half to one hour uh, once a week when small and then more as they get strong, uh, larger. However, I don't want you to have irrigation going, really the kind of irrigation you use on your lawn, going from 10 to 5 to get these things established. You can just come back and, and irrigate them periodically during the day. Just keep, you got to keep them moist until they are um, able to not wilt during the heat of the day. So if you use the little plugs, they take 80% less water because they've already got their roots nicely established in that soil and they just need to establish out. Um, so you can use less water if you get the plugs. You do want to make sure you pick off those flowers until you have five to six leaves on that plant. If you have fewer than five to six leaves, they really can't support flowers. And if the plant flowers and fruits, they're just gonna be small and nasty nasty looking, kind of like those ones that Lori had. <laughs> but, so don't be greedy, pick off those flowers until you get five to six leaves. Okay, Lori? All right, um, so I have some work to do on my strawberries, but um, to share a little bit more on the nutrition, there continues to be research on uh, the health benefits of strawberries, um, just as I was talking about before. Research shows that it helps decrease inflammation, um, which is gonna help with just your overall health of your immune system and um, your digestive system. And there's also um, promising news for diabetics because it's gonna help reduce that um, insulin resistance um, because strawberries are, have a good source of fiber in them. Um, and that's gonna help to take in that carbohydrate at a slower rate and utilize that by the body. Um, there's also a study out there um, that talks about uh, Alzheimer's dementia, where consuming one or two servings of strawberries a week has shown to decrease the risk of um, the disease by up to 34%. Um, so lots of great benefits, but overall, consistent intakes of fruits and veggies, um, which berries are included, is going to show um, long-term effects on your brain health and function. Um, so we want to make sure we're consuming them um, as much as we can uh, with our other balanced foods in our diet. And later on in today's presentation, I'm going to provide some different ways in which you can incorporate strawberries into different parts of your day. I'm sorry to, to um, criticize your strawberries. It actually looked like a poor pollination issue. Okay, there's different ways to grow strawberries. You don't have to put them in those raised beds like I was talking about. If you don't like bending over to pick, you can always plant them in some kind of a tower system. This is a system I saw in, in Italy, actually, and they've, they've used some kind of plastic tubing. Um, they look very nutrient deficient, so I'll just warn you about that, but um, you can work on that. You can also do a tower system like this. This is that vertigrow system. And when you're using these types of um, these are essentially hydroponic systems. You can use a, a soilless media that is pretty much sterile, so you don't have to worry about the root diseases that you can get with strawberries, which I'll be talking about in a moment. Okay, you do need to realize that it, since we're growing them in the winter time, flowers and fruit are damaged at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So if it's forecasted to be that cold or close to that, you might want to be ready to cover them over with frost blankets or low tunnels. The leaves and crowns, can, once they're acclimated, they can take those low 20s, but the flowers and fruit can't. And sometimes you'll have a flower and if, if it's actually in the middle of being pollinated and it gets too cold, it could be just the tip of it that gets killed, it could be the whole thing. Um, but you can put a uh, frost blanket over, just make sure you secure it. That top picture shows rocks holding it down on the edges. You wanna secure it so the cold air can't get up under and, and, and get it cold. Okay, so I talked about soil diseases. One of the reasons why it's difficult to grow strawberries is that there are so many soil diseases that 
affect strawberries. Um, commercially, they, they fumigate the soils um, before planting. And um, so you can't really do that. We'll talk about some things you can do instead. Um, the main soil diseases are Rhizoctonia, Pythium, and Fusarium, and they cause black root rot. And you can see some pictures there where the, the roots are all just all rotten, whereas the one on the left-hand side is healthy. And um, before you pull up the plant, you may notice that picture on the bottom uh, where it's just kind of dying back, not many live leaves. And that's the, top, the first symptom that you're going to see when you get these kind of root rots. You can, to, to avoid this and, um, and not have fumigation of chemicals, um, you can, uh, when you're soaking those bare root plants before you plant them, um, use a, you can pre-colonize the root system with beneficial microbes. And there's products like Serenade, TerraGrow, there are other ones that you make in a solution and you soak that root system overnight before planting. Growers will sometimes actually use fungicides that they soak them in before they plant so that they're coated with something to protect them. But um, it's much more, you know, ecological to use some kind of beneficial microbes that, that will pre-colonize and protect them. Um, you could also try some kind of biofumigation. That's where you have some kind of a mustard crop, a cover crop that you then till in and you, and you um, the, the mustard as it, as it decomposes releases like mustard gas that kills things. Um, there is also anaerobic soil disinfestation, and that's where they will uh, put down a carbon source like uh, rice hulls or, or um, you know, something that's going to break down, and they'll often put some molasses in with that, saturate it with water, and then tarp it um, for three weeks. And as the microbes break all that stuff down, they heat it up, and, and it, it's a, a biological fumigation that um, can kill off some of those bad diseases. Again, as I said, soilless media and hydroponics and towers, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, the other disease would be anthracnose crown rot. And this is, um, you, you see the picture there, the roots still kind of look okay, but that crown, uh, when you slice through the crown of the plant, it's all brown and rotten. And um, you also get this if you've planted them too deeply or if they're just really exposed to a lot of wet, warm weather. And, so really the best thing, get them out of there and remove and dispose of that dead tissue and plants. You can use uh, fungicides like Captan or Topsin. I don't know if everyone's able to get those um, fungicides, but a fungicide can help. But often it's, they've been planted too deeply and you got too much water on them. That's why you got to be careful. It's a, a, a delicate balance there between watering them enough to get them established and keep them from you know, getting dehydrated and keeping them from rotting. Okay, some other pests that you might find on strawberries. Um, you can get protectant fungicides. If you get a fungus that's causing leaf spots like that, that bottom photograph, um, you can uh, apply a fungicide. You have to realize though that fungicides don't cure a problem. They just protect the, the good leaves from getting the problem that's on the bad leaves. So that's really a protectant, not a cure. Um, so make sure that strawberry is on that label and follow it before you use any kind of pesticides, whether it's a fungicide or an insecticide. Powdery mildew is another problem. That top photograph is powdery mildew. Uh, when you see that, you can, uh, that's a fuzzy white growth. Um, sulfur applied when the air temperature is less than 80 degrees Fahrenheit will help with that. If you get caterpillars, there's um, Bacillus thuringiensis, something like Dipil or Neem can be used on caterpillars. And then if you get aphids or flower thrips, uh, neem or insecticidal soap or oil can be used on those for those pests. Okay, at harvest, this is the good part. You've done all this work, you finally got these things to produce and they look beautiful. Um, you harvest when there's about three quarters of the surface is red. If you wait till it's completely red, it deteriorates very quickly. So you only have like a day um, or two days where it's, they're good to harvest. So that's why you want to harvest every two to four days and, and get all the ones that are, that are close to ripe at that time. Remember that the fruit bruise easily, so you want to handle them carefully. And um, you actually want to snap or cut the stem to pick. Uh, if you just pull on that, that fruit, it, you may pull up the whole plant. So you either, I always just use my fingernails and, and, and clip that stem just above the fruit. You can see in this photograph, they're using a, a pair of scissors, but, um, you don't want to just pull on the fruit because that will that will um, hurt the plant. Okay, Lori. 
So then once we have um, all those delicious um, strawberries, um, we want to be able to cook with them. And really the combinations are endless. So they can be enjoyed any time of the day, variety of ways. Um, here's just a few ideas that I have to share with you. Starting your day with a yogurt parfait by adding your yogurt, um, your favorite cereal or granola, and maybe even some honey along with your strawberries. Or you can mix that all together if you want something on the go and drinkable and turn that into a smoothie um, is, is another great option. Oatmeal is great for our heart health. And in place of those individual um, serving bags, choose rolled oats instead. Um, it doesn't take that much more effort to prepare and you can mix it with milk to get an extra bonus of nutrition and another food group in your breakfast and then um, mix in those fresh strawberries. You can even do an overnight oat recipe if you want a quick recipe um, for something in the morning or even on the go, you can make it in a mason jar um, and have it ready to go. There's lots of great combinations. Uh, you can even add other fruits to your smoothies, um, parfaits, or oatmeal. Um, and then pancakes, instead of syrup, why not sweeten them up with some strawberries on top uh, for a healthier topping. And then mixing in strawberries into some cottage cheese is a nice uh, sweet treat. And then we move on to lunch. Um, you, salads are great and mixing up those plain boring salads Maybe you want to try spinach or your other favorite greens uh, with some strawberries and then maybe some pecans or walnuts along with gorgonzola or feta cheese and then topping with a little balsamic glaze um, will really create some excitement to your lunch or maybe a strawberry avocado pinwheel. Um, you can build a wrap with strawberries, spinach, avocado, goat cheese, onion and some lemon juice. Um, so super tasty. Um, and then at dinner time, um, don't forget, again, they can be used any time of day. So at dinner, you can mix up your chicken or ribs with a strawberry barbecue sauce. Uh, this recipe can be found at the Florida Strawberry Growers Association webpage, which I'll provide at the end of today's presentation. Um, or switch up your chicken fajitas with some strawberry jalapeno salsa. So lots of tasty treats. And on the next slide, um, you don't want to forget about snack time. So we love our snacks. So uh, you may have seen a fruit pizza. Maybe it was made with a sugar cookie bottom. So we can do a little bit healthier than that. Uh, a fruit pizza can be a great snack. Uh, so you can take it English muffin and add strawberry whipped cream cheese with some strawberries and some mandarin oranges and grapes uh, for a great afternoon snack. Um, or you can make fruit kebabs alternating maybe blueberries, strawberries, and bananas. And you can also add some cheese in there to, for an extra boost of protein. Um, when fruit salad comes to mind, it can be as few or as many fruits as you want. Um, utilize what you have in the fridge to eliminate food waste. And remember to vary those colors of those fruits and veggies um, in your meals because remember it's gonna give you uh, different um, health benefits. And then making uh, salsa, as mentioned on the last slide, can be great as part of a meal, but it's also great as part of a snack. Um, you can even make your own homemade tortilla chips. Um, if you have a dehydrator, you can also make your own fruit leather. So kind of like a fruit roll up, but much, much healthier because it's natural sugar and not added sugar. If you're not a fan of plain water, you can cut up some of those strawberries uh, and, or other fruits and cover them in water in your ice cube trays, freeze them, and then just pop them in your water for an added fruit flavor. And then um, besides ice cubes, popsicles are another way to stay cool with the summer heat, um, or should I say now fall heat. And on the next slide, I have a quick video to show you how to make strawberry lemonade popsicles.
and that video can be found on our YouTube page, um, UF IFIS Extension Lake County, and on the Family and Consumer Sciences playlist, where I also have some additional recipe videos. Um, so we love strawberries, right? But sometimes we can't get to all of them at their peak time. Um, so what can we do? Well, there's a few different ways in which we still can enjoy them. Uh, first, you need to plan for uh, what you want to freeze. Um, so you want to select the strawberries that are dark red, ripe, and firm. And then you want to wash them under uh, water and then remove the uh, stems and the caps. And then um, there's a couple different ways that you can prepare them. So to freeze them without sugar is also called dry packing. And you're going to do those steps that I just mentioned and then place them in a single layer on a baking sheet and freeze them. Um, when they're frozen, take them out and put them in, in a container or a uh, Ziploc bag and leave about a half an inch room at the top um, and freeze them. Or you can uh, freeze them with the sugar pack method. Um, that's adding three quarters of a cup of sugar per quart of strawberries to the berries in a bowl, mix it well, and let it stand for about 15 minutes, and then um, add them to the bag or the container just as the last method um, mentioned. And finally, you can freeze them in a sugar pack um, by adding your berries to your container or freezer bag, and then preparing a half sugar, half water uh, mixture, uh, mixing that together and pouring that over the strawberries before freezing. Whichever method you choose, make sure you label and date uh, your food and uh, use within 12 months for best quality. And then on the next slide, uh, if you're not growing them, but you're purchasing them um, for a recipe, uh, many times you might be saying, how much do I really need? I'm not sure how much this pipe is going to get me. So this chart gives you a little idea. Um, strawberries do range in size, so this is on average, um, but it gives you an idea of how to convert um, going from a pint or a small basket into cups or a quart. Um, so hopeful, hopefully that's helpful and the recipes uh, gave you some good ideas of how they really can be incorporated uh, throughout the day. Juanita, we have a question. Uh, Paula yep. wants to know, is there any special consideration if the if you plant them in pots? Um, there's no special consideration. You just have to be more careful with watering because pots could dry out a lot faster than the soil can. But if you're growing them in pots, you can use that uh, like potting mix, which is a soilless media, and then you don't have to worry about soil diseases so much. You still have to be careful to plant them at the right height, though, the right level. Okay, some recommended cultivars. University of Florida has a breeding program for strawberries and they're producing new cultivars all the time. Um, some of the ones that are most recent ones are Florida Brilliance, Florida Radiance, Sweet Sensation, Florida Beauty, which is a day neutral one. Remember, that's the one that doesn't require short days or anything, but it probably doesn't produce a whole lot of fruit um, at any one time at least. Um, Strawberry Festival, Winter Star, Sweet Charlie, and the ones that have the stars by them are recommended for you pick in Central Florida, whereas the ones with the little hashtag are recommended for the home garden. And I've had people say, well, you know, what's the difference? Well, um, you pick or commercial production, they like really firm berries and they can pick them a little bit before you would normally at home um, or with you pick and um, they will stay firm and they will ripen up. They may not taste as good as, as berries that are allowed to ripen perfectly right outside and pick the day that they're ripe. Um, so the ones recommended for you pick are going to be a little firmer because they have to, they have to um, survive transport. Whereas ones for your home garden are going to be maybe better flavored, but also softer so that you have to be very careful and use them quickly after you pick them. And remember, they ripen quickly. So every two to four days, you have to go out and pick them when, when they're coming on. Um, also remember that um, each plant will produce about one to two pints per plant per season. So when we're talking about all this, uh, all those fruit that I can't wait to try all these recipes, um, you got to have a pretty good sized strawberry bed to get enough to produce much. So one to two pints per plant per season. And um, as I said, uh, bare root short day cultivars are typically what we plant here in Florida. So um, as I said, they're usually 
treat as annuals, but they're not grown from seed, they're grown from, from um, transplants. However, when I was researching this, I found that the, the new All-American selection winner is Deliz's, and, or Deliz, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, and it's actually an annual strawberry grown from seed. I don't know if this would work well in Florida or not, but it might be kind of fun to try. Um, once you plant that seed, you can harvest 120 days from seed or 60 days from transplant. I really don't know how it'll work from here, but it, it sounded interesting to try. So we have some recipe resources here. And, um, uh, pardon me? It, it just, these are some great recipe resources and I encourage everybody to do lots of experimenting and come up with your own strawberry recipes. Um, if you have any to share over time, I would love to have them um, and share on our social media cha cha channels. Um, some of the resources I use from today's presentation include the Florida Growers, Strawberry Growers Association, Produce for Better Health, and the United States Department of Agriculture. So um, there's lots of recipes on each of these websites, um, so I encourage you to give them a try. I don't know if people have time to write them down and they can't click on them, can they, to get to the recipe from here? I don't think so, um, but um, we can always, um, if, if anybody needs them after today, just let us know. Um, and then this will also be on YouTube um, so they can see the recording. That's right. Wow. It's going to be recorded in our, on our YouTube channel, right? Okay. So if you have more questions about growing strawberries, um, the University of Florida Electronic Data Information Service, EDIS, has a topic of strawberries and all kinds of information about strawberries. The most common one we look at is that growing strawberries in the Florida home garden, which is edis.ifis.ufl.edu slash hs403. And I did get some of my information from there. So if you want more information, otherwise this is going to be recorded and you can um, look at it there. So, um, with that, I'm going to open up to questions. Um, we have one more question. It says, uh, Catherine wants to know, can we freeze the home garden varieties? Oh, certainly. They're going to, they, they will be soft, um, so they might be a little bushier, but um, they're, they're good to freeze as well. I don't know if you have any comment about that, Lori. No, same thing, that they're going to be a little bit softer. So um, you may um, just want to try maybe the dry pack method. Um, because um, that way you're not adding more sugar or moisture to them, um, just kind of freezing what you have, but um, it probably will work with any of the methods. Okay, uh, Cheryl wants to know, what did, did you say about growing in containers? Um, what about growing in containers? If you grow them in containers, um, uh, I would recommend using a, a potty mix that's like a soilless media, so it will be uh, disease free. So you don't have to worry about that. You will have to worry about uh, making sure they get enough water uh, because pots, um, especially if they're like ceramic pots, the water can evaporate from the sides and will dry out pretty quickly. So you have to make sure that they're watered properly. And if it does get cold, a pot will get a lot colder than, than a plant in the soil because the root zone is also exposed to the cold. But other than that, there's no problem with growing them in pots. Bobby wants to know about ordering information. This is a difficulty <laughs> because the, um, the plants have to be, you know, cold treated, grown up north. The nurseries that produce these for commercial growers are all based in Canada and they're all um, wholesale. So they sell them by the thousand, you know, a bundle of a hundred or a thousand, whatever. Uh, they don't sell in small quantities. So you may have to go to a, a local strawberry producer who may have some extra plants. Um, I'm not sure if, if the big box stores carry the strawberry plants that we need at the time we need them, because usually they, they provide plants at the time that everybody up north is using them, so they won't be providing strawberry plants right now. Um, so that, that can be a difficulty, but I, I would try going to some of our fruit nurseries and see if they have anything um, can, pro can provide those, uh, but a lot of it is, it, it's, they can be difficult to get.
All right. I'm going to launch the poll, Juanita. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. We have a little, a quick poll, two questions. Um, tell us if you learned anything for, new from the class today and that if you plan to adopt at least one thing that you learned in the class. So this is really helpful to us to, um, to show that, that people are actually finding our, our presentations useful. So I hope you can all answer those quick two questions. And then if you have any other questions, we'd be happy to answer them. So let's see, I can actually look in the chat room now. Okay, yes. And in Volusia County Extension has some information about getting plants, is that it? I know that um, Karen Stoderman, who's an extension agent in Volusia County, actually lives in Lake County, and she and her husband own Oak Haven Farms, which is out off of Wolf Branch Road. I don't think they sell plants, although if they, if they, get, enough, um, if they get enough people asking, maybe they will in future years. Oh, Joe, Joe Sewards also works in, in Volusia County, and does he have a source? Um, James, does he have a source of um, strawberries for you? Yes, okay. Well, I actually ought to talk to Joe then because I have a list of nurseries that are up in Canada that can provide plants to, because um, I've got more and more you pick growers who are interested in growing strawberries, but um, the nurseries I have are, are, are commercial nurseries that, that really sell wholesale in large quantities. Um, so Joe, Joe Seward's in, in Volusia County may have, um, or maybe I mean, the master gardeners could order um, a, a large quantity and sell them individually if they wanted to pot them up or something like that. So maybe we should do that in the future with our master gardeners here, if there's that demand. Any other questions? Oh, he gets them from UF Farms. Ooh, um, the UF Farms I know of are, are doing research. Maybe they have extra plants. I, I'm not sure. Um, the nurseries that I have gotten um, uh, the contacts for I got from Vince Whitaker, who is the strawberry breeder, and he told me to go to Canada. But that may be because um, I was asking for you for commercial growers. Any other questions? Yes, uh, Cheryl wants to know how long from planting transplants like Sweet Charlie or Strawberry Festival to harvest. Okay, once they, once they start to flower, and they stood, should start to flower as soon as you've planted them. If, if they have, if they've been cold stored and have been exposed to short days, they should start flowering soon. You don't want them to flower until you have five to six leaves. So you can pick the flowers off until then, but the, the, they'll start flowering, and then it's about 28 days from flower to harvest. So can they be grown in the screen lanai, or do they require pollinating? They require full sun, which you will not get in a lanai, and they do require pollination from insects. There is some wind pollination. If you use a little paintbrush and go around and pollinate the flowers, you can do it by hand, um, but I don't think uh, they will like the, the shade of a lanai. Do you need to winter the seeds before planting it? Well, now the, the, the plants in general are not seeds. They are small plants or transplants that are produced up north. Um, that, that, cult, that seeded cultivar, I've never heard of growing strawberries from seeds before. Um, and I don't know if they will work here, but those would be seeds that, that um, I don't think they would require cold chili. And I don't think they, I don't think they need to winter, but I really don't know how that one works. So, but it was an all America selection. So it sounds like it could be good. Um, it'd be worth trying. Okay, I see some people who are interested in a group order. So maybe, maybe we'll get a group order. If, if, if you, if you need Bobby, enough, can... Bobby said she's going to order from the TR Coast Rare Fruit Club. Treasure Coast Rare Fruit Club has strawberries. Okay, good. They may have gotten a, a big order and they're dividing them up. That's, that's a good way to do it. And, and be aware that, yeah, now is the time um, to be getting them and planting them here soon. 
Um, sometimes this you may not be able to get some because they've um, committed all the ones they've grown, but it's good to try. This is the time to be thinking about it, if not earlier. Okay. Okay, I think that's it, Juanita. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And what's the one next week? I put in a plug for next week's. Do you know, Rwanda? This is the last one in the series. Oh, okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for your input. And um, I'll let Lori and me know if you want any more information about enjoying strawberries. Thank you. Uh